Deep in the heart of Africa is Botswana, roughly the size of France. Constituting 70% of the country is the oldest desert in the world, the mighty Kalahari. The Kalahari is a place of mystery because unlike other deserts, this is a place that certainly contradicts itself. The paradox of this vast space is that part of this area of sand is the swell of the lushness that is the Okavango Delta. With the lagoons and the islands, it's an utter contrast to the dryness. Located in Southern Africa and bordered by South Africa, Namibia and Zimbabwe, Botswana is a mid-sized country of just over 2 million people. Not long ago, this country was one of the poorest countries in the world and it had a very limited infrastructure with a laughable GDP of 70 US dollars per year. But today, Botswana is part of an elite club of Africa's preeminent economic performers and this is due to the discovery of diamonds in 1965. My name is Peño Moroka and welcome to the very first episode of Doing Business in Botswana. Diamond mining revenue has provided the government with resources to construct and maintain a solid infrastructure, including roads, telecommunication systems, hospitals, hotels and schools. A cosmopolitan and peaceful country, Botswana has earned a reputation as the Diamond of Africa a safe environment to live, work and play. The stability and good governance over the last decades, coupled with healthy economic growth, has helped develop one of Africa's most desirable living addresses. The government has invested significantly into infrastructure and historically we've, we've, we've invested very well into building hospitals. Uh, the public health sector is, 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 is fully funded by government but even over and above that you do have uh, private health care and there's two very big private hospitals that one can, uh, can find uh, you know, good health services in within the country. There's also private schools that are available if, if you're relocating with your family that are of international standard and repute. Uh, the lifestyle is, 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 is as good as you'll probably find in other places, uh, more, you know, more cosmopolitan places such as Johannesburg. So you really have everything you need if you are, if you are in Taboroni. The presence of a well-maintained infrastructure complemented by political stability and good governance tends to encourage foreign investment. Primarily as a ministry, we are charged with the responsibility of creating wealth for the nation. And for you to be able to do that, you have to provide the right environment, what we normally refer to as a conducive business environment for business to thrive. Uh, we have done that through a number of initiatives. First of all, pieces of legislation that we've put in place to ensure that uh, the, the, the environment is right for trading, uh, for competition, for uh, competitiveness in general. We have also come up with structures that support that, structures such as our Botswana Development Corporation that is there to provide funding and take equity in processes, uh, institutions such as Botswana Investment Trade Center that is there to handhold investors to reduce a uh, government bureaucracy that is not naturally associated with uh, doing business in a number of environments. We have done that by addressing the SMME sector, by having an institution specifically uh, to nurture the SMME and to provide linkages with bigger companies. I can go on and on, but it's through legislation, through the right structures to ensure that our environment is competitive enough. The development of a primary and secondary infrastructure has been a public spending priority for decades, with the government allocating a minimum of 30% of the national budget on new public works and the maintenance of existing structures. The returns here are also quite strong in terms of uh, profitability. We're one of the most profitable investment destinations in the world. And um, you know, we believe that we have the, the macroeconomic environment, um, you know, the stable governments, very strong institutions um, that can actually support the growth and the successes of, of, of a number of businesses 
here. There are also very specific areas that we think uh, offer uh, significant uh, you know, returns for investors across a number of sectors, um, which is agriculture, mining beneficiation, financial business services, tourism. So we believe th there's a lot of value that we have to offer. And I think we are uniquely positioned uh, very differently from a number of other African countries on a number of measures uh, for that matter. Centered in the heart of Southern Africa, Botswana provides investors with preferential access to the Southern Africa development community's entire marketplace with over 230 million people. The value proposition there is that we, we would like to extend the successes that we've had in creating a very strong environment. Uh, that is strong from a regulatory standpoint, that is strong from an economic standpoint, that is strong from a governance standpoint, to allow uh, corporates and institutions to use our country as a platform to be able to successfully provide services and products and businesses within a regional context. We are land surrounded and that in itself creates opportun opportunities in terms of linkages. We also believe that we have the right kind of uh, infrastructure uh, for you to be able to bring in goods, to take out goods to, to market destinations. Much as the, the population is small, the structural arrangements that we have in terms of agreements, uh, in terms of participation in institutions such as the Southern African uh, Customs Union, uh, the participation in AGOA, which is African Growth Opportunity Act, the immediate uh, uh, one that comes to mind that we are excited about is the recent conclusion of the economic partnership agreements with the, the European Union. They provide uh, comfort to, to the investor as it were. The country itself has vast investment opportunities in several sectors such as mining, tourism, agriculture, beef, energy, banking and finance. We are pushing for agro-processing as a sector. We are also pushing for tourism as a sector. We are pushing for manufacturing as a sector. And we are pushing for all the downstream activities within mining as a whole. Not just downstreaming in diamonds, but downstreaming in diamonds, downstreaming in uh, the coal sector, downstreaming in, in all the other uh, sectors that we have. Because we believe that is where the greatest growth is going to come from. Um, and therefore, we also we had a challenge because we had focused on manufacturing, but it didn't give us the yield that we wanted. We have now come up with policies such as economic uh, diversification drive, which is looking at uh, the, the government appetite, which is looking at quasi-government as well, to say we need to utilize the resources that we produce here first before we go elsewhere. That will jumpstart industry, that will facilitate uh, uh, the, the, the economy to, 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 to grow and will be able out of that to then have expertise, to then have the pricing right, to then have uh, the economies of scale and that would also improve our competitiveness. Opportunities for investing in the mining sector include prospecting, expansion of existing mining projects, new mining projects, beneficiation of minerals and business opportunities resulting from links with other areas. Botswana is endowed with mineral wealth, that much I can say, uh, because there is no mineral that is not available in, in Botswana. Um, we see the significant uh, exploration that has taken place in the past 10 to 15 years uh, that has discovered lots of coal um, in Botswana. Botswana is now ranked the second largest coal uh, deposits uh, in Africa, following after South Africa. The other uh, uh, mineral that we are seeing of significance in this country uh, is copper. We seem to have uh, found uh, Botswana's copper belt. As, as, as we know that Zambia is, is, is known for its uh, mm -hmm. copper. We have the Zambian copper belt and the DRC copper. So Botswana seems to have found also a copper belt. Botswana is synonymous with diamonds. Successive governments have wisely and prudently invested diamond revenues into all aspects of economic, social and political development. It is our ability to have utilized the diamonds. I'm sure you know that we are the biggest diamond producer by value in the world. We have utilized that to develop the country, to give confidence to the world that you can have diamonds for development. And we show that in terms of having had an economy that has been largely dependent on that uh, commodity, but having achieved the success we have. We've always been on a growth pattern, yes, 
Now we are not on double digit figures, but we have been there as a result of to, uh, the extent to which we have managed the natural resources that we have. And we are going on to the second phase. The second phase, which is granted we have these natural resources, what are we going to do about them? Because the nation will measure us in terms of the jobs that we provide, it will measure us in terms of the amount of foreign direct investment we can attract and so forth. So the next phase is beneficiation, value addition, it's uh, linkages and, and, and all that. Economic diversification has been the key consideration in recent national development plans. The government has grown the agricultural sector by diversifying agricultural production and promoting potential for investment that exists in agro-industrial and supply chain development. The whole idea why we, we, we said we needed to have economic diversification drive was to really coordinate all the efforts in all sectors, coordinate the private sector, coordinate government to make sure that we are all going in a similar direction so that we can measure the pace at which we are driving this thing, we can measure the impact it's having on the economy. That's the whole concept around economic diversification drive. An array of financial institutions populate the country's financial system, with pension funds and commercial banks being the two most important segments by asset size. Banks remain profitable, well capitalized and liquid as a result of growing national resources and high interest rates. Botswana's competitive banking system is one of Africa's most advanced, generally adhering to global standards in the transparency of financial policies and banking supervision. The financial sector provides ample access to credit for entrepreneurs. Botswana's tourist market continues to grow with high-end tour operators and hotels experiencing continued profitability. Because Botswana is cattle country, potential investment opportunities exist within the beef industry. The country exports meat to the European Union and has recently opened links to supply its neighbors, mainly Zimbabwe and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Although Botswana is a rapidly growing economy, challenges still exist. The most frequently cited market challenge is the narrow skills base of Botswana's workforce, partly due to the country's small population and lack of opportunities for workers to gain experience and training. Botswana offers too few experienced managers and specialists. Most investors find they must retain expatriates to fill these roles. What we have done, as you know, our literacy rate is at around 82%. So we always talk about the fact that we have a trainable workforce. And we even pay you as an investor to train our people because you can get a tax rebate of 200% uh, on the basis of the amount that you have spent on training. So they also have to focus on the fact that they will find trainable workforce because of our literacy rate. And even if they go out of their way to train, government will incentivize them to do the same. Because it's not a question that we don't have skills necessarily. We might not have the right skills uh, that you have. And it's just a question of working hand in hand within your own strategy as an organization, but working hand in hand uh, with government as well. Our government continues to find new and creative solutions to complex modern challenges, seeking solutions and partners for economic prosperity. This is the attitude that continues to serve as the backbone of our development efforts. From me, Peño Moroka, join me again next week.